welcome everyone to our channel under light polluted skies. Today, as promised, we are going to be taking a look at the optional Bush 2 system that came with our Taurus T300 telescope. First of all, we are not affiliated in any way to any other brand which may be mentioned or seen during this video. All the equipment that you will be seeing has been purchased with our own money. We have not received any compensation or incentive for producing this video. This small box is the brains of the Digital Setting Circle Systems, or DSC, made by Taurus Telescopes. It has the ability to connect via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to a smartphone, tablet or computer. It features four connection ports. These are from left to right, declination, right ascension, USB power and DC in power. On the right side we have the on-off switch. Declination and right ascension uses RJ45 connectors, while the USB power plug is a Type-A1 and the DC in uses a 5 to 9 volts plug. In order to use the system, the first step is to attach this box to the base of the telescope using the included velcro strip. We then have to connect its cables from the encoders as follows. Altitude encoder goes to the declination plug and azimuth encoder goes to the right ascension plug. Now we need to provide a power supply, which in our case is an external 5 volts power bank, which fits nicely in the cable supply. We have also bought an inexpensive silicon foam holder to keep the battery in place. The DSC system requires a planetarium software capable of managing and reading our encoders. There are a number of well-known apps which could be used. As we already had Sky Safari in our mobile phone, we will show here what the settings are for connection before doing anything else. Go to settings and scroll down to telescope setup. Tap on scope type and scroll down until you find and select basic encoder system. Next, go back to settings and choose mount type, selecting Altas Boost 2 and make sure that you enter the correct encoder steps per revolution. You will need to change the positive and negative sign depending on how your telescope reacts to movements. Next, return to settings once more and in telescope setup menu, you need to select the connection mode, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. We normally use Wi-Fi and, this is very important, you need to enter here the IP address and port numbers as shown on the screen. Please review your DSC user guide received with the system in case these numbers are not the same. Last step is to change readout rate to your personal preference. We use 6 per second and this is accurate enough for our purposes. Here you will see the same settings in a much clearer way, so you can pause the video now to take notes if necessary. Before going any further, it is absolutely critical that you set the telescope tube as close to ground level as possible. The system is expecting your scope to be pointing to north horizon when it started up. So, point your telescope roughly north, then lower the tube and use a spirit level to achieve that perfect level. Once the telescope is ground level and pointing north, you can turn on the system. Go back now to your phone and search for a new Wi-Fi connection named Taurus DSC. It will require a passcode the first time, which is written in the user guide. Once connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot, go back to your planetarium software, hit the scope icon and tap on connect. You will then realize that the software is automatically pointing to north horizon. Now you need at least one bright star to perform the alignment of the system. The easiest option is to just go up to Polaris, searching it with your finder scope and center it in the IP. At this point, tap on the Align button and confirm.
It is always a good idea to use another star for improving the alignment. In this example, we have chosen Capella, so just search for it in the app, hit the center button on the, left, on the bottom left corner, and then hit push to twice in order to see a directional arrow. It will help you get there. Center the second star carefully in your eyepiece using a high magnification and then hit line and confirm again. Now you're ready to start looking for any object that you may want to see. Let's make an example with the popular Orion Nebula or M42. Go to the app, search for M42, then hit center and right after that tap push to two times so you can see the arrow. During all the process described above, you can use the zoom in and zoom out functions to have a better view of your target. Move the scope in the direction of the arrow, zooming in when you're close to M42, and once it is in the crosshair, you should be able to see it in your eyepiece if your alignment was accurate enough. Remember to use lower magnifications when searching for the target. In the limited occasions that we have used the system so far, it has proved to be very precise, and our searches were always satisfactory. That's all for today, thank you for watching the video, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time!